Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA board, comparing the cores to original hardware as close as we can. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Super Nintendo, or obviously in front of you, you see a Super Famicom, same system, different name. But people have been asking me a lot about how close the core is to the Super Nintendo, and we're going to talk about that today and give you a setup guide on how to make it work the best. Before we get too far into the video, you can do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon link down there as well. But I'm really excited about the Super Nintendo Core because I've been playing Super Nintendo for a long time and it's my wife's favorite system. So I really want to know how close to accurate is the Mr. compared to original hardware because I've heard really good things about this core, same with the Neo Geo. And the one thing off the top that I do love about it is that I have a Super Famicom, I collect mostly Super Famicom games, but I I do have some North American games as well. You'll see here I just pop Donkey Kong Country 3 in and everything works perfectly fine but of course the cartridge slot is molded. Now I usually just take my boards out of the plastic case and pop them right into the machine that works perfectly fine but this is going to be easier on Mr. so I do love it for that. And the nice thing about the Super Nintendo is it natively supports RGB out and the Mr. is going to have digital HDMI out and that VGA port, which is either VGA, it can be BNC, it can be component. It is reconfigurable and I'll go into that in a later video about video differences. Because comparing direct video output from the Mr. to original consoles is always hard because everything does something slightly different. But on the control front, the Switch Pro controller makes an excellent analog for the Super Famicom or Super Nintendo controller because the buttons are all in the same configuration. I may get an 8-bit Doe controller in the future because I don't like where the analog sticks are when playing 2D games, but it's as good as you're going to get without buying something new. But you'll see as we get to the car here, up at the top we just are able to load those different ROMs, and if we take a look here we have the video region and the ROM header. I leave both of these to auto, I've never had any issue with it, and I suggest you do the same. But if you've been watching these videos so far, you're going to know what I'm going to say next, and that's we're going to want to define the controller buttons. You want to do this per core, not just at the main Mr. menu, it's going to be the most reliable for you. So just go in here, map your controller, whatever you're using, PlayStation 4, Switch Pro, Xbox One, whatever controller you have, you're going to use that. And all we do is go to load the ROM and you're going to see all the different game options we have. These are just the ones I put in for direct comparison, but all you do is pick your ROM and you hit the A button and it's going to start loading up. And it takes maybe about three seconds in total for us to get into Kirby 3. And I love the output for the Mister. It's nice, it's bright, it's vibrant. I might say that the audio is slightly too loud by default. It can clip channels. So my recommendation is just to turn the volume down a little bit, but of course everybody's system is different. But you'll see here when we move on to the Super Nintendo version with that RGB analog video, things are a little bit blurrier and they're a little bit less vibrant. And this is just the difference in video signals. But audio wise, listen to these comparisons and I'll be right back. So it's wholly subjective which one you think sounds better. I might give the edge personally to my Super Famicom with the analog audio signal coming off that JP21 connector. The Mister's audio is perfect. It's pristine, it's digital, but I think maybe it might be just slightly too crisp to my ear. But that's just an observation. It's not any sort of detriment to the core. And I will say that I wish my Super Famicom in my capture device was slightly brighter. I could have adjusted this and made it look better, but I wanted you to see what it looks like when you hook it up to a computer and check it out. On a PVM, it's definitely a lot more even, but I love just how bright and vibrant the Mr. Colors are. This is the Kirby 3 I know and love and remember. And as far as video is concerned, you have a lot of different options, but again, I'm just going to say the best thing to do is leave it as is. Please don't play it in full screen. I don't use any of the scam doubler things. I just think they all make the image look worse than what it natively looks like. I'm playing this in 720p because I think it upscales excellently to 4K, but in the future I will talk about different scaling modes we can use. And moving over to Rockman X, here on the Mister, it is vibrant, it's colorful, but some games on the Super Famicom I still think look better as that analog signal, and I just have that RGB JP21 cable coming out, and I just think that the logo looks slightly less vibrant in a better way. But again, to compare the music, listen to these samples, and I'll be right back. So 
So again, subjectivity aside, I do still enjoy my Super Famicom audio because I've noticed even on an analog signal with original hardware, Rockman X likes to get very close to clipping the audio track. You really have to turn the volume down a lot. And with the Mister and that digital audio signal, I do notice a few places where it does like to clip. If I put that waveform in my monitor, I've noticed a little bit of clipping. But as far as how the game actually executes code, the slowdown on the Mister is identical to the slowdown in the Super Nintendo. And that's a really good way to compare how accurate the core is, because you should expect them to kind of slow down in the same places. And it's accurate enough that I die here on the Super Nintendo because I screwed up, and what's going to happen, and this was not intentional, I'm going to die in the exact same place. So the game is doing the exact same things, basically to screw me over. And now moving on to Super Castlevania 4, or the Japanese version. I do really like the image quality here, but again, when we move over to the analog signal, it's just a little bit gringier, a little bit dirtier, and I think that actually goes to help the Super Famicom or the Super Nintendo against the Mister. And these are all the tiniest little observations. Whatever looks right to you is going to be what you like the best. It's not any sort of dig on the core. As far as I can tell so far, this core is 100% accurate. I cannot find a difference in how the frame timing works, how the control feels, how the game is playing. They are, to my eye, if not near identical, then absolutely identical. There might be some slight variations here and there, but they're imperceivable. Only the biggest pixel peeper ever might be able to tell a difference in how these games are actually running. And that's to, you know, to say that the Mr. Core is absolutely outstanding. I could play this all day long versus my original hardware. But when we move back over to the Mr., you know, the color is a little bit brighter, everything looks a little bit clearer, and this is where you need to make the decision for yourself. Some people want the most pristine video quality out possible, and the Mister is definitely going to give that to you. Some people really like the analog RGB signal out, and the Super Nintendo is going to give that to you better. Granted, you can do that VGA port out with either VGA, component video, or BNC into a PVM, but I still think that the original hardware just looks closer to what I remember these games playing. Now, if you've never owned a Super Nintendo and you want to get into it, then you're not going to notice this. And I definitely would recommend the Mister over Super Nintendo unless you want to collect physical games. But if you played these games as a kid, you might notice that the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom look a little bit closer to accurate to you as far as the images quality is concerned. But again, the music sounds really good across both, and if we just move over to a direct image comparison, on the left the Mister, on the right the Super Nintendo, those logs aren't as detailed on the bottom, but that's what I think they should look like, and they're a little bit more wood colored, where you get a little bit more orange on the left. And a lot of developers used to use the fact that people were only using composite video signals to kind of hide what they didn't want to show you, and with a really good digital signal off the Mister, you see them. But I'm moving over to one of my favorite Super Nintendo games of all time, a great party game, Mario Kart. It's crazy to think how old this game actually is. Again, it plays absolutely perfectly. And in a little bit, I'm going to sync up the frames and show you that everything executes 100% frame accurate. And that's what we really need to care about the most. Is this core being able to reproduce a Super Nintendo's code execution in the exact same way so that it plays as intended. And I can 100% say for Mario Kart, that is 100% true. It's great to play on the Mister. It looks great on my 4K TV, upscaled from 720p, because it is an integer scale. But either way, you play this game. It is such an incredible game. But again, on the Mister, this is an instance where those bright, vibrant colors really work in its favor. Something like this, something like Kirby 3 look amazing. And you'll see as we cross the finish line here, I have both audio tracks playing over each other and they are synced dead on the money. So the core is doing a wonderful job. And another benefit, I had to clean this cartridge twice because when I first turned it on, I had no racetrack up top. And that is something that I'm definitely noticing is a big benefit of the Mister, is that I'm not constantly sitting around trying to clean cartridge contacts. But now moving on to another classic game, Donkey Kong Country. This is an instance where the Mister's brightness and vibrancy I actually prefer over the Super Famicom with RGB because it's still dark, but when you go over the Super Famicom, it's just a little bit too dark with the capture. Now granted, like I said, I got on a PVM and I died there. It's not too, too bad, but I do like the Mister 
video quality better. And that's what I'm noticing with pretty much all of these cores, and especially with the Super Nintendo one. Sometimes I like the original hardware's look better, and sometimes I like the Mr.'s look better. So it's impossible for me to say one is more accomplished or doing a better job than the other. It's going to be down game to game. But honestly, the Mr. is so close and it looks so good that I'm not going to sit around and try to get the last 1% of perfection out of something. Because if you pixel peep and you spend hours trying to get the best image quality, you're not playing the game. And my entire idea is that these games are meant to be played, even if you're going to see me here take the most unfair death ever. That damn armadillo got me. And again, moving over to the Mister with Yoshi's Island, I love the vibrancy and colors. And what I'm noticing is the Mister's HDMI output does a better job of feeling more accurate when you're dealing with bright, vibrant, colorful games, where my Super Nintendo on RGB is slightly muted. Things like Kirby 3, things like Yoshi's Island, they look amazing on the Mister. You go over to something like Donkey Kong, and it's a little bit darker, and the Super Famicom with RGB is going to be closer in comparison. But again, this is all opinion as far as what it looks like. As far as how Yoshi's Island executes being a game that has the Super FX chip, it is perfect. I've played this game more time than I can count. This is my wife's favorite game of all time, and playing Yoshi's Island on the Mister is absolutely the exact same experience as playing on original hardware. And that basically is what I'm taking away from the Mister Super Nintendo Core. If there are any differences compared to original hardware as far as how the games play, as far as how the code executes, they are so incredibly minor you will not notice. Maybe if you're a speedrunner of Yoshi's Island and you know the game front to back, you might notice something ever so slightly off. And here, those waterfalls in the background are a little bit smoother on RGB. I'd rather have the more vibrant colors, but I would say the blurriness adds to the effect on the original hardware. But again, everything is amazing. It plays exactly like how I remember. And if you've played this game before, you're going to love it on the Mister. If you've never played it before, playing it on the Mister is going to be an outstanding experience. And I expected a lot from the Super Nintendo Core because I had heard a lot of good things about it. The same with the Neo Geo Core, and it 100% did not disappoint. Now I love my Super Famicom and I love collecting cartridges and box games for it, and I'm definitely going to still do that. Because I didn't buy a Mister to replace my hardware, I bought a Mister to make it easier to play when I only have 30-40 minutes. Plus, I love this stuff and I wanted to check it out. But if you don't own a Super Nintendo, if you don't own a Super Famicom and you want to play a lot of the games, the Mister is an absolutely fantastic option for you. And like I said earlier in the video, the fact that I don't have to take apart my Contra 3 Alien Wars cartridge to fit into my Super Famicom means that it's easier to play because a lot of times I want to play these games and don't feel like dismantling them. But like I said, if you want to play Super Nintendo games, if you want to play Super Famicom games on a 4K TV via HDMI, this is going to be the option for you. Even if you want to plug them into a PVM or a CRT with that VGA component or BNC out, it is an outstanding option. I am super 100% impressed with the Super Nintendo Core. It is 100% accurate in my eyes and I've been spending a lot of time playing Super Nintendo games in my life. Short of that, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love chatting with you guys. And if you have any issues with the Core or need more help, I'm always here to answer those questions. Do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we will be back in two weeks with more Mr. Content. We'll have videos on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday as well. But thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.